Hey everyone, today we are doing coagulation testing with the KC1 Delta. This is our semi-automated uh, analyzer for our coagulation testing. It is brought to you by Stago <laughs> and today me as well. Woohoo! Um, so what we're going to do today is talk about how this actually differs from every other analyzer that you see out there. Coagulation testing is very special uh, because it uses a physical uh, type of methodology in order to um, detect the reagent. So, not the reagent, I'm sorry, to detect uh, the coagulation that's happening in the patient, uh, at least in the patient specimens. So, see the steel ball here? When I put this onto uh, the analyzer, what's happening is it has a rotating measurement well, okay? And notice that the ball is staying in one spot because there's a magnet in there, okay? The magnet's gonna keep the ball in one spot, but the cuvette is constantly moving. So what will happen is when we put the patient specimen in there and the specimen begins to clot because the clotting cascade is activated, then the ball will detect the viscosity by starting to just get stuck in it. And when it gets stuck in it, that ball is not gonna continue to stay in that one spot where the magnet is. It's going to move along with the cuvette itself. So it's gonna stay and look like it's making circles, whereas right now it looks like it's staying still, okay? So um, the two uh, types of testing that I'm doing today are the PT, the prothrombin time and the activated. Um, partial thromboplastin time, which is the PTT. So with that, we have um, two reagents that we use with the PTT, and it's due to how the specimen tube actually works. Okay, so notice here that uh, this is a sodium citrate tube. Right there, you see sodium citrate. And what that anticoagulant does is pull the calcium out of the patient's plasma and make it so it's not able to be used in order uh, for the clotting cascade to happen. And you cannot have clotting without calcium. So while the uh, phlebotomist or the nurse draws this, they immediately are going to invert it like this to mix see all this anticoagulant in the tube, they mix the anticoagulant throughout the whole blood in order to take that calcium out so that we can have valid results in the lab. If the specimen, <clears throat> excuse me, was not drawn correctly in regard to the amount of whole blood that's in there, um, so usually there is a fill line on here and this one doesn't actually look like it has one. It doesn't really look like it has one in the plastic, but this one does. Okay. So notice, see, there's like a, et oh my goodness, come on, focus. See, there's an etching right there. That's a line and that's your fill line. Okay. This is also a double tube. Notice this is a glass tube inside a plastic tube. And the reason for that is because the silica in the glass, sorry, actually is like an activator, okay? And so here we have the fill line would probably be the, the top of the blue right here. Okay, and you want to have the uh, fill line uh, to indicate how much visually for the nurse or the phlebotomist to draw of the patient, um, the patient uh, whole blood. And the reason that we want it to be 90 to 110% filled is that we want to make sure that our ratio uh, for the anticoagulant is correct. Why does that make sense? Well, let's look at that really quickly. Okay, so if I have, if I have a tube, right, and I have my blood in there, um, if I don't reach that 90% fill line, what's gonna happen is I also have anticoagulant in here. And if I go, outside of this nine 
to one ratio coagulant, then it's going to mess with uh, the clotting that is allowed to happen in the tube. So if say that I have uh, less than a 90% filled tube, okay, say that I have whole blood up to maybe 50%. Okay, I still have the same amount of anticoagulant in there, but at this point I have less blood that I've added. So what's going to happen is I have more anticoagulant and less whole blood. And that means that I'm going to have less calcium available for the anticoagulant to take out of my blood. Well, how is that going to affect my testing? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> when we do testing, we have, um, let's talk about the PTT testing. When we have the PTT testing, if you notice, I had a calcium chloride tube that is preheating in the uh, incubator right there. It's preheating in the incubator. And the reason that I have that there is because the calcium chloride reagent is going to add calcium to our patient, um, our patient specimen and reagent mixture in order to get the mixture to actually clot because that's what we want. We want to test how long it takes for uh, the patient's blood to clot and that therefore also indicates um, uh, the concentration of the factors that we have in our blood. So we can see, are there factor deficiencies? Um, is there, is there something maybe wrong with the, the quality of the factors that we have? Maybe we don't actually have a factor deficiency or a platelet deficiency. Maybe we actually just have um, a problem with the way that they're made, uh, mainly if you're thinking about uh, qualitative disorders, okay? There might also, you know, there might also be a platelet problem, so we would uh, keep in mind our CBC results as well, so we can look at our platelet count there as well. And, and these would all uh, work hand in hand together. So hematology and coag um, are very closely knit in regard to uh, how to how to interpret these results. It could also be that the patient is on anticoagulant therapy, which is a big deal uh, because if you're taking a medication that's going to end up messing with the clotting ability of your blood, then, you know, we should know that in the lab and we um, will see it in the testing results. If you have anticoagulant therapy, then that means your, your uh, clotting times uh, with your PT and PTT are going to end up being longer. They're going to be prolongated. And um, if it, it depends on also what... Um, sorry, what therapy you're on. So with PTT, we're thinking heparin. Um, with, excuse me, with PT, we're thinking warfarin, and it can also be called Coumadin. So when you're working on the coagulation, la or coagulation bench, you want to make sure that uh, you are looking for the correct, um, the correct medication when you're investigating prolonged results. Okay, so let's get back to this. So we have uh, less calcium, more anticoagulant. We add the calcium chloride to the tube, um, but we had an excess of that anticoagulant. So what's going to happen? The anticoagulant is going to take that calcium, right? And it's just going to make it so that you know, the, the time of the coagulation is going to be increased because it, it could be, you know, we could add as much as we wanted of the calcium chloride. We had so little of the whole blood in there to begin with that we're, um, that no matter what calcium chloride we add in there, that anticoagulant is going to pull it out. So it's completely inaccurate, okay? So that would be a QA issue. All right, and since we know that that's going to the 
going to be the case. If you see a specimen that is 90 is less than 90 percent full then you're going to need to call the clinician and uh, let them know it needs to be canceled because it's going to be inaccurate okay and the same thing you would end up doing if it's over 110 percent full it's just the opposite of uh, what would happen you'd have an over abundance of calcium and you it would seemingly mean that you it looks like you have less anticoagulant so that means um, if that's the case that it's going to clot quickly because the anticoagulant is um, not being very well represented okay so it might even clot before it gets on the analyzer and if that's the case um, you know, you'd have a very little <laughs> um, clotting time uh, for the PT or the PTT. And then you're thinking hypercoagul hypercoagulability um, and whether it's a QA issue uh, of the way that it was drawn or a QA issue of it being um, clotted before you even put the anal um the specimen on the analyzer, either way, that will affect the way that the clinician treats the patient. And it's very, very significant um, that and important that you report these things correctly. So if you're not sure about uh, the specimen, then you need to investigate it before you put it on. So you need to look at how much is there. You need to look at the color of the plasma after you spin it. Because if you have a hemolyzed specimen, it might, um, it might be clotted. And not, uh, not everybody, I guess, realizes that if you have a hemolyzed specimen, you're putting phospholipid out there from the uh, RBC membrane, okay, the cellular membrane. And if that's the case, that's going to cause, cause the clotting cascade to actually start and be activated in the tube. And so if you ever see um, a specimen that's hemolyzed, uh, the methodology that you use for the PT, PTT is not going to be affected by it, but the quality of the results may be affected because it may already be clotted. So the best thing to do if that's the case is you clot check first, okay? You clot check first, and then you re-spin it um, to to get the cells back down at the bottom, and then you can put it on if it's not clotted. If it is clotted, obviously you call and uh, cancel it and ask for a redraw, okay? And so um, let's get started on the testing. I'm gonna continue this in part two.